predictions. I predicted that the Chargers would beat the Texans, so what the hell do I know? Crossy Posse Packer Nation. Welcome to an episode of Podcast, the podcast where you don't have to be back or saying, but it sure does help. I'm your host, Tom. <sighs> I just want to do well. Grassi, and today we're going to be predicting every single outcome for the entire Week 17 slate. Last week, I went 9-7, and seven, <laughs> 146 and 93 on the year, which means I'm 1,353rd on the Pick'em Leagues. Can I finish in the top 1,000? Probably not. However, we have a new number one, Peter Stewart, at 169. Nice and 70 on the year. Congratulations to Peter. Let's see if he can keep it up in the week ahead. So no Thursday game, no Saturday game meeting. I had to wait six freaking fracking days until football. What is this garbage? I thought this was America. So instead, we're starting off with Sunday afternoon. You got the Atlanta Falcons taking on the Buffalo Bills. The Atlanta Falcons able to squeak away with a win against the Detroit Lions because the Lions, well, they lined it up as much as humanly possible. Tim Boyle laser show throwing his first tutty and then throwing another interception. So that didn't work out to end the game. Meanwhile, you got the Bills. A huge win over the New England Patriots. And now the Bills controlled their fate. And if they win these last two games, they win the AFC East. So, the Bills are in the driver's seat. The Bills, even though they got some COVIDs, they're getting some people back because of the new protocols. The Falcons, they need a lot more back. They, they just need anything, really. They need Jesus. And I don't think that's going to be happening on Sunday. So because of that, I'm going to pick the Buffalo Bills to get the W here. Moving on, you got the New Jersey Giants taking on the Chicago Bears. The Giants kept it close in the first half against the Eagles. And then they got the crap slapped out of them. No real surprise there. They have no team. Daniel Jones not starting for the rest of the year. And they're going to keep Daniel Jones and Joe Judge. So they kind of deserve what's happening to them. Meanwhile, the Chicago Bears... Pulling off some last-second magic. If only they could do that, I don't know, for the beginning seconds or the middle seconds of this entire season. But defeating and eliminating the Seattle Seahawks, appreciate you, going for two at the very end after scoring a Jimmy Graham touchdown and being successful. Take notes, Ravens. And so this game being played in Soldier Field, Matt Nagy, probably his penultimate game coaching with the Chicago Bears until he gets his 10-year extension. And so because of that, I'm going to go with the Chicago Bears, going to finish this year off pretty strong, or as strong as you could possibly look, beating the Giants. Moving on, you have one of the most intriguing games of the week. You got the Kansas City Chiefs taking on the Kitty Goes Meow Cincinnati Bengals. Both these teams having huge wins last week. The Chiefs absolutely dominating the Pittsburgh Steelers, who were taunting even though they were down 30 points. But that's neither here nor there. Chiefs defense has been immaculate. They're freaking fracking on the best win streak in the entire NFL right now. And the offense is starting to click a bit more. Meanwhile, the Bengals, Joe Burrow, 525 yards, four tutties for that guy against the Baltimore Ravens, who have a banged up secondary. This is a great prove-it game for the Cincinnati Bengals as with a win and a Steelers loss, they could clinch the AFC North. However, the Chiefs, they've proven to almost be unstoppable these last few weeks. And so because of that, I am going to pick the Chiefs to win this one. I think it should be a pretty close game, but the Bengals scare me with some of their inconsistency throughout this entire year. You have guys like T. Higgins and, of course, Jamar Chase and Boyd doing really, really well. On top of that, Mixon scoring. But I don't think it's going to be enough against a stout Chiefs defense. So because of that, I'm going to pick the Chiefs to win. Then another great game. You got the Miami Dolphins taking on the Tennessee Titans. The Dolphins lost seven straight, and now they've won seven straight. Try to explain that. And some people do because they're like, oh, well, it's a pretty easy schedule, Tom. So that's how they're able to do that. And here's the thing. Their offensive line, hot, doo-doo, garbage. Terrible. Terrible. However, Waddle... 
is doing real well. On top of that, Tua is playing pretty good football. And the defense, of course, is still good. They just sacked Ian Book eight times uh, this past week. Meanwhile, the Titans coming off a big win against the San Francisco 49ers, another playoff contending team. And they looked real good doing it, mostly because A.J. Brown came off IR. And he's like, don't worry, guys. I got this. This should be a really close game. It has a lot of playoff implication. The Dolphins are trying to fight their way in and stay in the playoff hunt. Meanwhile, the Titans, they technically are not in the playoffs yet, but they have like a 99% chance of getting in there. I think they're going to clinch a playoff spot with a win against the Dolphins just because the Titans defense is no slouch either. And if AJ Brown's able to get going, I like the Titans chances. Following that, you have the Vegas Raiders taking on the Indianapolis Colts. The Raiders dispatching of their division rival in the Denver Broncos because they have no offense to speak of. And the Raiders didn't even really look good in that game, but somehow the Broncos were just worse. Meanwhile, the Colts, two impressive wins. Back-to-back wins against the the Patriots, and now the Cardinals, and now they're taking on the Raiders. Carson Wentz coming down with the COVID. However, new protocol, so he only has to be in quarantine for five days if he doesn't have any more symptoms. So there's a chance he still plays. I'm going to give it to the Colts here, regardless of who's playing a QB, because let's be honest, you just really have to hand it off to Jonathan Taylor, and you're going to rock and roll with that. Their defense isn't playing really well. So because of that, I think the Colts are going to win this just because the Raiders, I don't really think they have the team to compete with them. Following that, you got the Jacksonville Jaguars taking on the New England Patriots. The Patriots on a two-game losing streak, which will change this week when they beat the Jaguars. Patriots are going to win. Now, I've also cursed two teams by doing the really, really short prediction, so if I wind up cursing the Patriots, you're welcome, Jaguars. But Patriots win. Yep, no curses here. Then another really, really lopsided game. You got the Tampa Bay Buccaneers taking on the Jets. Zach Wilson, um, he, he had a 52-yard run, and, and he beat the Jaguars. The Buccaneers, they got Antonio Brown back, and they decimated the Panthers. They have a really easy schedule left. They have the, they have the Panthers, the Jets, and now they have the Panthers again. Yeah, it's going to be two short, short predictions if the Buccaneers win. And Jets fans just cry in horror as Tom Brady decimates their team once again. Then you have an NFC East showdown between the Philadelphia Eagles and the Washington football team. The Eagles flying their way up, trying to clinch a playoff spot. Meanwhile, the Washington football team getting absolutely destroyed on Sunday night football. The freaking Cowboys put up 50 points against you. It, it was an ugly performance all the way around. The Eagles relying on a strong run game and good play from Jalen Hurts. They've been doing pretty well. Washington, they have a decent defense at times. It just wasn't just on display on Sunday night. And while it is being played in Washington, and they will have the poo water falling out on their fans, I don't think that's going to help them in any way, shape, and form. And in fact, I think it actually might give you dysentery or malaria. You should get that checked out. Eagles, fly, win. Then you have the L.A. Rams taking on the Baltimore Ravens. The Rams beating the Minnesota Vikings, but Matthew Stafford throwing three interceptions and not really looking so good. However, the defense picked it up for him, and on top of that, Sony Michelle has really emerged as a pretty damn good running back over these past few weeks, had over 100 yards, and more importantly, Cam Akers being activated off IR. Obviously, he hurt himself earlier this season, before the season even began, and this is a huge opportunity for the Rams to get another key player back. The Ravens, they're decimated to hell. Who the hell knows who's going to start a QB here? Lamar Jackson is practicing again, so maybe he's able to play. But either way, the Rams are kind of on a little bit of a hot streak right now. So I think the Rams are going to be the ones to win this football game. However, for Grandpa Cardinal's sake, you got to hope it's the Ravens. Then you have an AFC West showdown between the Denver Broncos and the Chargers. The Broncos, as we talked about, they sucked and they lost to the Raiders. The Chargers, they sucked even more and they lost to the freaking Texans. The Texans, folks. You lost to the Texans. Justin Herbert. Thanks for scoring that touchdown late, but didn't help me in fantasy. Throwing a pick six. Not looking great. Eckler obviously wasn't there, but Eckler being activated off the COVID list, so that's a positive thing now. And I, I think the Chargers should win this game. The Broncos' defense is pretty darn good. 
However, the Chargers, in an effort to try and stay alive in the playoff hunt, they need to win this game. And so because of that, I'm going to say the Chargers win this. Following that, you have the Texans taking on the 49ers. The Texans winning their Super Bowl last week by beating the Chargers. Davis Mills is just like, I have the neck of a giraffe and I can see into the future. Also, I eat leaves. And so that was exciting for them, even though not exciting for, you know, them falling down in the draft. Meanwhile, the 49ers suffering a loss against the beat up Tennessee Titans. Jimmy G just not looking good. George Kittle getting shut down and they really couldn't get the run game going. I think this could be a little bit different here. The Texans, well, impressive. They beat the Chargers. The 49ers have a better defense here. And also, I think that run game will be a little bit better this week. So because of that... 49ers win. Moving on to what is likely to be the game of the week. You got the Arizona Cardinals taking on the Dallas Cowboys. The Cardinals on a three-game losing streak, no longer number one in the NFC West, and things are not clicking. James Conner, obviously not playing on this past Saturday. You had Chase Edmonds fill in. If James Conner is able to play this week, him and Edmonds should provide a huge boost for that offense, obviously without DeAndre Hopkins still. But Kyler Murray also needs to clean some things up as well, and the offensive line needs to give him some time. Meanwhile, the Cowboys firing on all cylinders against the Washington football team. They have clinched the NFC East, and they are still in the running for the number one seed. They need the Packers to lose one more game, and the Cowboys need to win out, and then they are the number one seed, fulfilling the darkest timeline. I am going to give this one to the Cowboys just because their defense is really hot right now and they are just on a roll. It's going to be tough to stop the Cardinals offense. However, if the Cowboys are able to utilize their run game, keep Kyler Murray off the field and be opportunistic with, with Trayvon Diggs, the Cowboys unfortunately should take this one. Then there's a game. It's the Panthers and Saints. They're both bad. If I had to watch the Saints offense one more time in prime time, I might rip my eyes out. You're like, Tom, that's a little extreme. I've also watched too many Saints games. Alvin Kamara doing diddly squat for me. Thanks for not allowing me to get into the fantasy championship. I appreciate that. That's a, I appreciate that. But yeah, Ian Book was not the answer. They need a quarterback. They're on their fourth string quarterback at this point. The run game lacking the offense just can't do anything their defense is still good though the Panthers Sam Darnold is going to start on Sunday so there's probably gonna be three interceptions there I'm gonna pick the Saints to win but it's just disappointing for both teams technically the Saints are still alive in the playoff race but I don't really think they're gonna be able to do anything because they need a lot of help to get there and both of these teams just need a lot of help in general then you have the Detroit Lions taking on the Seattle Seahawks both teams will be at the same place in January on the couch as the Seahawks were the first team in the NFC West to be eliminated from playoff contention. And they might be the only team that is actually not going to make the playoffs from that division, which is kind of funny. Meanwhile, the Lions, as we talked about, they lined it up. We'll see if Jared Goff is able to come back and be the QB once again. The Seahawks, they have a talented football team. They're just not looking right at all. I mean, Russell Wilson, Pete Carroll, there's rumors that there's going to be a divorce going on there. And then I think about my childhood and go, huh. I wonder if that shaped who I am today. And then I don't think about it too much longer. The Seahawks, I think, have a better football team just because they have more talent on there. DK Metcalf is still tearing it up regardless. So I think the Seahawks should be able to win against the Lions. And if you lose to the Lions, well, don't even bother showing up to Week 18. Then you got Sunday Night Football. The Minnesota Vikings, a.k.a. the Purple Incarnation of Satan, heading to Lambeau Field to take on the Green Bay mother-loving Packers. The Vikings, uh, regardless of picking off Matthew Stafford three times, unable to come up with a W, losing Adam Thielen for the year. However, Dalvin Cook getting activated off of COVID is a big deal, so they will definitely be utilizing him on Sunday because it's going to be cold. It's going to be four degrees with a negative 16 wind chill, so Aaron Rodgers will be donning the turtleneck. The Packers currently dealing with a little bit of a COVID outbreak. Who's going to be their left tackle? Pfft, hell if I know, considering all the injuries that are going on right now and Ben Braden also on the COVID list. The Packers still have some time for those players to be activated off the COVID list if they're not showing any symptoms. But guys like Mercedes Lewis being out, that definitely hurts. Could get MVS back. We'll see about guys like Bakhtiari and Jair Alexander who did get activated today. But this could be a really close game. Dalvin Cook is one of the best running backs in the NFL. We still have to worry about Justin Jefferson, who absolutely tore apart the Packers' secondary the first time they met this year. 
The Packers, they need to stop getting off to damn slow starts. It's going to probably be a running football game, so look for A.J. Dillon and Aaron Jones to really set the tone here. But I am going to pick the Packers to win this. The number one seed on the line here. They need to keep pace. And if the Cowboys lose earlier in that day and the Packers win, they get to sit their players in Week 18. So a lot on the line here. And also, please, God, don't be slept by the Vikings. Packers win. Finally, an AFC North showdown on Monday Night Football. You got the Cleveland Browns taking on the Pittsburgh Steelers. The Browns losing a two-point heartbreaker to the Green Bay Packers on Christmas Day. Refs definitely helped not running with Nick Chubb after he was averaging seven yards a carry. Also didn't help, and Baker Mayfield throwing four interceptions also didn't help as well. Meanwhile, the Steelers, as we talked about, they got absolutely steamrolled by the Chiefs. And both these teams can still win the AFC North, which is the ridiculous thing about this entire season. This division, who the hell knows? It's Black Friday and you lit the store on fire and people are still trying to check out. I have no idea. The Steelers, they look like they have no fight in them whatsoever. The Browns, they look like they fight, but they only fight for a quarter or two. So I'm going to pick the Browns to win this, even though the Steelers will probably come back in the fourth quarter because... According to your name tree, still gone Super Bowl. But here, I'm going to pick the Browns for maybe an upset here just because the Steelers looked so flat last week. And the Browns, they have a better chance of winning the division than the Steelers do. But let me know what you think down in the comments below. How do you feel these games are going to shake out? Let me know. You guys saw me at TomGrossyComedy.com or at TomGrossyComedy on all social media you see down below. Check out podcasts on SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Play Music, Spotify, and of course YouTube. And a big shout and thank you to all the patrons over at Patreon.com slash and the YouTube members. But thank you so much for watching. I'm Tom Grassi. And as always, go back, go.